So hello guys, it's Gary back with another video, and in today's video we're going to be talking about Kaiba. This theory isn't my theory, rather a huge fan theory about Kaiba dying during the ending of Dark Side Dimensions. And this video will contain spoilers for the plot for DSOD. Now this theory sparked when the spoilers immediately came out, which will be linked in the description below. I didn't think a lot about it at first, I originally thought it was some bullshit, but after my top 5 video about Kaiba, I really started getting interest for this theory. And I wanted to give my take on it, so even before getting on what if I support it or not, I'm going to give a background on Kaiba from the manga because this film does take 6 months after the manga and his background information plays a very major role in this theory. Before writing down my thoughts I wanted to understand Kaiba as a character. Without doing any research your first thoughts on Kaiba would be that he's a billionaire douchebag but that's not the case. Kaiba's emotions are very suppressed. He rarely shows how he truly feels because we all know that he's an orphan regardless of them. Kaiba was very young when he first arrived at the orphanage with his brother Mokuba and that was because Kaiba's disgusting relatives took their inheritance and left them in a life of living hell and despair. Less than a handful of years later, Gorzaburu Kaiba arrived at the orphanage to seek a successor. Kaiba then saw this opportunity to leave the orphanage with his brother and he challenged Gorzaburu in a chess match and won by cheating. Before we get further more into Kaiba's life story, I just want to recap on how he fell through this. Kaiba lost both of his parents at such a young age and his relatives honey dicked him and Mokuba from getting their parents hard work. And Kaiba didn't even get to see his mother for that long and his father died around the time he was 8. The fact that someone loses both of their parents at such a youthful age is just sad. Kaiba not having his parents to guide him and mold him into who he is plays a very major role in his quote unquote douchebag personality. Because understand this, the way you act, the things you do, the hobbies, etc. are all environmental things that are influenced by surroundings such as the internet, friends, teachers, assemblies, but for most people it's family. Kaiba at the time at the orphanage then made a vow to make him and his brothers lives better. So already at the age of 8 through 10, Kaiba has set a goal that he must accomplish. At the age of 8, I was thinking Power Rangers and May from Pokemon. <laughs> Now I want you guys to keep how Kaiba feels and his set goals on the back of your head because we still have a long way to go explaining Kaiba's feelings and background. Now as I stated before, Kaiba defeated Gorzaburu in a chess match after Kaiba won. He thought that his life would change for the better, living a luxurious life because Gorzaburu is a very very wealthy man, but that simply was not the case. Gorzaburu ended up abusing Kaiba and forced Seto to study in many subjects and hit the books. Kaiba probably thought that winning the chess match would be a life changer, helping him and his brother out. But the fact that Gorzaburu was just an uprising in the hell of that poor 10 year old's life is just sad. Not getting the chance to live a proper childhood defeats the purpose of being a child. Any adult that I've talked to miss being a child because of the stress and real life shit that they deal with. After 6 years, Kaiba then takes over his foster father's company. Prior to taking the leap, he tells Seto that he has lost. Because there are other people at the meeting and they all agreed upon Kaiba becoming the new president of Kaiba Corporation. Gorzaburu talks about that the person that loses deserves to die. Kaiba accepts his message. Gorzaburu ending his life is pretty much wanting the last laugh. But let's skip forward more into the video, I want to talk about this interview that was translated by Takshino Bushi Hiroko, and I'm sorry I pronounced your name wrong, but Cass said was, his expressions are more akin to the slightly demented one that he had around the time he was just introduced in the original story. Throughout his battles with Dark Yugi, the darkness in his heart dissolved in gradual sense. That being said, the man who served as his rival, Dark Yugi, disappeared in the battle ceremony and, as an effect, caused a madness to resurface in his eyes. So what this means is that Kaiba is similar to himself in the beginning of the manga, and with the Tim leaving, he got the fire back in his eyes. That being being said, we're going to move on to a Tim's relationship with Kaiba, and this also plays as an emotional help towards Seto. Kaiba before meeting a Tim is broken and enraged. Kaiba is haunted by his late father favorite Gorzaburu, and note that Kaiba isn't thinking properly throughout all those years of mental and emotional and physical abuse. Your mind isn't proper, you change drastically, it doesn't matter who you are. Kaiba and Yami duel a second time, and this is where the mind crush happens, and from this event it breaks Kaiba's mind and he has to put it back together. So with this doing, it helps out Kaiba a bunch. Kaiba reviving a Tim isn't mostly about the duel he wants with the Tim, rather that he wants his rival back. Kaiba misses a Tim because he needs a foe forever and ever. It's an eternal rivalry that will go on forever. That's the main reason why Kaiba is reviving a Tim. He did all this shit in the film just to revive someone that died. And really think about it, it wasn't because he loved someone, but it was a rivalry. How insane is that? So why I gave so much information on Kaiba's backgrounds and emotion is that because in this theory it plays a huge role. Kaiba truly never shows how he feels because he's broken. In the ending of Dark Side Dimensions, Kaiba acknowledges Yugi as a competent, amazing duelist and then smiles and leaves. And this pretty much means Kaiba's on better terms with Yugi. Whilst Yugi and Kaiba were dueling, Yugi steps in the middle of the arena for their duel and little Yugi says to Kaiba that this is pointless. And then he then takes the puzzle away in the encasing that we saw in one of the trailers. And then he puts the two pieces of the puzzle that were missing together. 
and nothing happens and Kaiba looks shocked and from that event Yugi explains to Seto that a Tim can't come back he's no longer in the puzzle and Kaiba is just pissed and yells at Yugi and he seemed to think genuinely that a Tim could come back. Later on Agami becomes possessed by the Millennium Ring and while everything is dissolving around the earth due to Agami's actions Kaiba is like to Yugi call him call him now. Yugi puts on the puzzle and then a Tim does come and then do feed Agami. After all that contradictive bullshit happens Kaiba goes to Yugi and says you're a competent duelist and smiles and leaves with his brother. So I do think that Kaiba did die in Dark Side Dimensions now let's get into the part where I explain why. So when the credits roll Kaiba is with Mokuba and Mokuba warns him that they haven't fully tested it. Kaiba then tells him not to worry and says Mokuba I'm leaving everything towards you. Kaiba is close to the pod and he has Agami's cube next to him and he leaves and he does make it to Tim's afterlife and then the film ends off with a Tim smiling. Now we're going to the juicy stuff. What I think happened was that Kaiba realized that he couldn't bring back a Tim to the real world because Yugi explained it earlier to him in his duel. When a Tim does appear the Millennium Puzzle goes with him. The fool Kaiba is literally insane to the point where he realizes that first option of a Tim returning wouldn't work. So I think that Kaiba figured out a way that he has to go to a Tim's resting place instead of bringing him back to the real world because Yugi did state that a Tim couldn't return and also the puzzle was taken away. Kaiba was pissed that the Pharaoh couldn't return. Why the hell would he smile and say Yugi's a good duelist? Now he might say that Yugi's a good duelist but he needed Yami to defeat a gun and I think that Kaiba smiling was rather a meaning of I found a way to revive a Tim. The only reason why I don't believe that Kaiba truly meant those words is because at the ending, he should have realized that there's no point in reviving Dark Yugi, but instead he insists on doing it. Throughout the whole film it doesn't go in Kaiba's way. Note in Transcend Game Part 2, Kaiba almost died if it wasn't for Mokuba because she stopped the machine. A lot of people are saying the pods look similar to TG2. Why do you think Mokuba is begging Seto not to do this? Mokuba isn't certain if Seto is going to make it back and Kaiba doesn't care, he just needs his rival. The reason why I'm siding with Kaiba dying is because he first said Mokuba take over Kaiba Corporation. Why would he say that if he knows he's going to die? Also in TG2 he was about to die but Mokuba stopped the machine. While in the process of dying Kaiba said I'm coming for you. He literally put Kaiba Corporation, his staff, everything behind to just try to get to a Tim. Seto doesn't care about his life, he just left his brother Mokuba by himself. Why I went so heavily in depth about Kaiba's background is because I stated in the interview he was his early self and that madness appeared in his eyes again. So this Kaiba has to be pre mind crush and what a Tim being awake Kaiba's gone insane and pre MC Kaiba still has the emotional, physical, mental abuse from his father figure Gozuburu. Imagine revisiting the baddest you. All I would want to do is go back to my pure self. The thing is that a Tim cured Kaiba, he is gone from this planet. Hopefully you guys understand what I mean. But another minor reason that really sparked was when Gorzaburu said to Kaiba before he died was that the loser deserves death. Seto accepted this message. Seto has lost to Yugi several times. He's the loser in this scenario because this was his last time, the final opportunity, the final time to become the victor. But we all know deep inside that Kaiba would never beat a Tim. So it's his way of accepting Gorzaburu's message because just like Gorzaburu there was no way in hell from coming back. Everyone at the Kaiba court meeting voted for Seto and for Seto this was the final opportunity to meet a Tim and try to win but we all know he's going to lose. So to end this theory off we're going to be talking about if Kaiba is content with dying and why this is the perfect ending. Kaiba has already had the feeling of dying early in the manga. He's also put his life at risk in Duel's Kingdom and I also did a what if on if he did die how the events would change and the final time was in TG2 so I personally believe that he doesn't care if he dies. He just wants to get his way. The reason why I think this is the perfect ending is because Kaiba in the film got everything. I'm talking about everything. This film was mostly about Kaiba. Even though it didn't look like he got his weight, he still did. He got so much fan service in this film. It's insane. First of all, he got a six pack. Virtual cards, a space station, so much support for his monsters. He was able to summon a god card. Finally still got to duel a Tim twice. The first one doesn't count though, but the second one does. Him dying is just the perfect way to end this. So that's pretty much my theory. Disagree or agree if you want to. Primarily my reasonings for supporting this theory was early on in the manga when Kaiba had all that demented just fucked up mind and the interview that Cass did in the Millennium book so that was just my main source I was like as soon as I thought of this theory I was like I wanted to relate back to Kaiba's past so I had to do a lot of research on his background etc but that's pretty much it guys thank you very much for watching have a great day